What's up, guys? Shea Stevens here, PDGA number 77522, and I'm here with the back nine of my first ever round at Tornado Crossing Disc Golf Course. Let's get to it. So, as usual, if you haven't already, check out the front nine of this round. I'll have a link for you up here. Basically, I uh, went to the new course in Mantua, New Jersey to check it out. Uh, I saw it is going to be an 18-hole course. Uh, right now, there's only nine holes installed, but they do have longs and shorts. So to play 18, you play the longs first and then the shorts. Uh, so I cover the long tees in my front nine video, and in this video, you'll see the short tees. Uh, just a heads up, I do play pretty quickly because I'm running out of daylight, and unfortunately, you're going to find out some uh, bad luck befell me mid-round, which slowed me up some more. So I do have a pretty quick pace of play, so I'm sorry about that, guys. Uh, but without further ado, let's get to the round. All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to the second lap of Tornado Crossing. We're playing the shorts now. So hole one, 279 foot, par three. Hard dog leg left, double mando. Honestly, the way you get to this basket, I think it's like a backhand cut roller. I am not feeling that today. So I'm gonna throw a low skippy fireball, just get me in position to up and down. All right, out in the field. Just this little up shot. Just able to put an anode right through that gap, right to the basket. Maybe into the basket. Oh, that would have been fun. Not as close as the first time around, but it's still pretty easy. Okay, hold two. Same tee pad as the long, so 258, hard dog leg left. I learned the first time, doesn't help to go long on this. Pretty much an ungettable par three, unfortunately. So I'm just gonna play this out. An entry P, just nice and easy. Should have a simple up and down from there. All right, next time I want to lay up even softer. That's a bigger gap and it gives me a hyzer. But straight anode shot the basket. That one could go in too. Ooh. Okay, I'm dotted with the anode today. I need to throw that more. Yeah, give me these putts all day. All right, I definitely like hole three in the short from the short pad a lot more. 195 feet, just a nice shot down a tunnel. Let this finish to the left. Love that ace, that, that branch coming out. That's an ace killer. Great positioning on that. So you honestly, you can probably play a skip ace. So I'm actually gonna try that a little bit. I have a tempo here, just gonna ease it down the hallway. Maybe get a flare skip, we'll see what happens. Uh, got the skip, but not enough. All right, I would say that tempo was a good call. Just annoying enough. Birdie. Hey, got my first birdies both times on all three. Okay, hole four, 322 foot, par three. And again, I really like the shape of it. It's a hyzer, but you got a gap here. You got to figure out what you want to do. Could go over the top of something stupid, but that's pretty stupid. So I'm just gonna take a photon low right side. Try to air it out enough to get a skip in there for maybe a putt, we'll see. Ah, uh, Loby. Skip, skip. All right, maybe a long look. Okay, got a step putt. A little encumbered on the right side. I could forehand chip it, but I want to work on the step putt. So let's get this there. Ooh, over the top. Alright, sorry if it's darker guys, but uh 
I lost the fly, the wheel off of my, or the flywheel off of my rover cart. Went back to look for it, couldn't find it. Bad times. All right, so hole five, 168. Just a simple hydro shot, should be an entropy. Just let it do its thing. That should be cool. All right, so that one might have flown the basket, actually. Almost back to where my uh, envy was on my upshot from round one. Good two. Okay, hole six, par three, 377. Or is it both, or they both play as par fours? I think they both might play as par fours, actually. So par four, it looks like. So just mash one into that gap. Upshot and get out of here. So we're gonna go photon toward the right side, let it do its thing. Cart just fell, or bag just fell. Right. Needs the hyzer. Ooh, got some backside penetration. Let's see what happened. All right, so got caught up in this wood pile back here. Thought I might have gotten lucky, fought through a little bit and hides toward the basket, but uh, once again, let's hold doing a little forehand chip action. Hoop. Okay. Hoop. All right. That's a tap in. Okay, all right. And since I think it's pretty common for people to probably miss this gap right or left, leave a surprise. DFX Donut Hex. So if you go in short, you find a prize. Okay. Luckily we're out in the light for these last few shots. <sighs> 385 par four, it looks like. So just out in the wide open, so just let her rip. Hit the side of the tee pad, but decent huck was not full power. Okay, let's try to put this close. Yep. Oh. Tap in action on seven. Okay, hole eight, 462 foot, par four. So again, just time to unleash one. I'm gonna throw my slightly more stable photon, but only because it's a bright red, so it should be a little easier to find as I am losing light. Oh, if only I flipped it. That felt so good. All right, this looks very similar to the upshot I had last time around. But I think I'm closer now, so I'm going to throw an entropy at it. All right, a little on the short side, but should be puttable. Right. Not short, actually a little long. So a good upshot. Okay, hole nine, same tee pad as the first time, so 388 foot, par three. I really want this one, so I see this photon to flip and ride. I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw my darker one, because there's a lot of light over there, so I should be able to see this. I uh, got a little flip out of it. Not much, though. Living on the edge. Okay. Let's just get out of here, up and down. Uh, nosed up. All right, not as good as an anode shot as before. All right, guys, this is going to wrap up the short tees of Tornado's Crossing. Again, sorry for the lighting and the speed of the round. I wanted some time to make sure 
I can go and check the first two holes, see if I can find my flywheel for my cart. Uh, back to Shea. And that'll wrap up my first ever round at Tornado Crossing Disc Golf Course. Right after the round, I parked my cart and I uh, grabbed the UV flashlight and my cell phone flashlight and ran out to try and find my hand screw. And I got lucky on hold two. I did find it. Uh, that picture makes it look way brighter than it was. I have no idea how I found a black hand screw in pitch black night. Uh, of course, I ran all the way back to hold three T to try and find it the first time. Had I gone 100 feet further, I would have gotten it. So uh, that's how, you know, that's how things do be sometimes. Uh, as for thoughts on the course, um, the f beginning holes are a little on the janky side, I'll be honest with you. Uh, holes five through nine, though, wouldn't change a thing. I love them. Uh, you could argue to pull a tree off of five, maybe, but honestly, it's East Coast golf. If you want that birdie, you got to hit the line, and if you don't, you pay for it. But that hole is very easy to birdie, or I'm sorry, to par, uh, and I am okay with that risk reward. So, yeah, everything looks great. I mean, I really like hole seven. Uh, I talked about it in my first video, hole seven's long tee pad being down that ditch. Uh, it's a really cool shot, and, you know, I appreciate the work that went into that one. Uh, as for the front first four holes, though, I do have some suggestions. Uh, I did uh, go to a map to kind of show what I'm talking about, so let's take a look. All right, my first suggestion isn't really a course design issue. Uh, the Mando signs uh, at Tornado Crossing are red, and they don't really pop. They really blend into the trees. I would suggest going with something more, you know, contrasting, like a white or a yellow, just to make them pop. On hole one from the longs, I didn't even realize there were Mandos. I was actually contemplating a shot over the top and didn't know I would be penalized if I did it. So uh, that's my first, you know, request or suggestion. On to hole one. Uh, so for hole one, the shot shape is just so unnatural. It's an impossible par three, honestly. You have to throw in or do some kind of crazy cut roll or throw a, you know, a crazy over the top shot through the double mando, which is going to be really hard to officiate uh, to even have a look at that. So... I and mean, that's from both from long and short. So my recommendation was just to move the basket out into the open field, uh, pretty much making it a straight shot, uh, which is fine. Cause I, I like the fact that, you know, you step up in the tee, you see the basket, you know where you're going, uh, kind of sets a good pace for the round. I was very confused, you know, trying to figure out this tee shot when I got there. Uh, so I think putting the basket out in the center would be a little more appealing and a more reasonable shot, especially for a player's first shot of the day. Uh, it's still demanding. You got to go through that double Mando, uh, but I think it's a little more of a reasonable ask. All right, so hole two, again, just a very unnatural shot shape off the tee. It's either a crazy hyzer flip to not quite flat or an, you know, a panning forehand anhyzer to carry this for even a prayer at circle two birdie. I just don't see it happening. It's a shot I would expect somebody who is scrambling to have to execute because they got themselves into trouble, but it's just something I wouldn't ask players to do off the tee. So my recommendation would be take the tee pad, move it up like 20 feet, uh, towards like that first Mando on the right. And I think that makes it more of a natural hyzer shot, uh, but still demanding. You have all those trees uh, short of the basket you need to navigate. So I still think that makes it a demanding technical shot, but it's a little more reasonable. And if you want to add a long tee, I think the current green of hole one actually makes for a good long tee. You got to navigate those gaps, those trees that are guarding the current green to get off the tee. So you have to take gaps right off the bat. And then you have to navigate obstacles at the end of the flight too. Uh, in terms of distance, I think it's only 320 feet according to uh, Google Maps. So in terms of distance and technicality, it's something I would expect a higher level player uh, to be able to, you know, to execute. So I think that's a way we can keep hold to demanding, but a little more reasonable. All right, so initially I didn't like the long tee pad for hole three, but after sitting with it for a while, I'm th the problem was me, not the tee pad. I just hate downhill left to right shots because I stink at them. I got lucky, got the birdie this time around, but uh, upon further review, I am cool with hole three. Don't change it. All right, guys, on to hole four. I have two ideas for this one. First things first, the short tee pad is perfect. Don't change a thing. I absolutely love it. It's great course design. I love the framing of it. I love that tree in the middle. It really makes players pick their line they're going to use to attack this green. So great job there. Long tee pad, though. It's just so unnatural. Again, it's an extreme hyzer that you have to throw with like 500 feet of power to carry. It's just a really big ask, I think. And I don't like just the way it's framed up. Uh, it's basically asking for early releases like you saw me almost pull off. Uh, and I don't like how you just can't see anything really off of the tee. Uh, after the disc is about 50 feet in front of you. So it's really, if you go left, it's just making it prone to losing discs, which is not a good time. So first recommendation, take the tee pad, move it up like five to 10 feet, not that much, and pitch it 45 degrees left. 
uh, make it face more of the field. I, th- I still think that's a hard shot because you're asking players to throw with rough in front of them. So you have to throw a nose up shot. So it's a, it's still asking for power. It's asking for technicality, but I think it's a lot more fair of an ask uh, for a long tee pad. If that's still too extreme, we could try 20 feet forward. And that puts you out on that access road. I don't know how often that is used by the park. Uh, again, this is my first time here, so I don't know how you know regularly park vehicles travel these roads, if it's still active. Scratch that idea. My other idea, which takes a little bit of work, I'll admit, is a new long tee pad out in the field to the right of the short tee pad. So this is actually the field that you throw would throw out to for hole one. Uh, if you could do another cut through just like you did on hole one, I think it would be a great shot shape. You have a ceiling to contend with. You, so you have to throw a low power shot, uh, and you still got to find a way to carry that distance into the green. So I think that would be a really cool alternative. But again, I recognize that does take, you know, effort. You got to work at the park to make sure that, you know, you're not removing anything they don't want you to do. Uh, so that's kind of a big ask. Uh, but those are two ideas I think that could help improve hole four. All right, those are my recommendations for holes one, two, and four. But overall, I'm really excited for this property. It's got really great bones. Again, thank you to everybody who's helped make this course a reality and is currently working to install more holes. It takes a lot of effort to install a disc golf course, guys. I'm going through the process now. It takes a lot of time and mental and physical energy. Uh, so you really got to appreciate those who are willing to give it to, you know, give to the community. So thank you to everyone who's helped make this course a reality. Really looking forward to the final layout. I have a picture from the Facebook group I'll throw up here. You can see what the rough idea is for the... Uh, final product of 18 holes and when those are done i'm definitely going to go back i'll bring my camera with me so you guys can come along and we'll see what it looks like but uh i think with a few tweaks uh this will be another feather in the cap of south jersey disc golf uh you guys are getting another awesome course right by alcyon so it, you know two courses in one day deal very easy uh so something to be excited about I'm looking forward to it uh but with that that's been my uh first round ever tornado crossing disc golf course you know a bit of business to take care of uh just with all the craziness of the beginning of the school year didn't notice I actually hit uh, 1,100 subscribers on the YouTube channel. And I haven't really ce- uh, celebrated you guys in a while, so welcome to all the new subscribers. Uh, and to celebrate, we're doing a little uh, three-disc giveaway. You just got to tell me in the comments below what hole at t- uh, Tornado Crossing was your favorite, either like long tee, short tee, or if you like both tees, let me know. Uh, just tell me what hole was your favorite hole, and I'll do a drawing of the com- from the comments. Uh, my next video uh, will probably be my... Uh, next round video I do. Uh, I'll do a drawing at the beginning of that one, and a winner will be getting. I'm doing a Vision Special Edition Envy. That is 173 gram. Since we're getting close to uh, winter, I got the 2022 uh, winter disc from MVP. 178 gram Cosmic Neutron Echo. And to top it off for the driver, going Special Edition Plasma Zenith. And this is 169 gram. Yep. So three this set uh, to the lucky winner. And again, to be eligible, all you got to do is comment down below and tell me what was your favorite hole at Tornado Crossing Disc Golf Course. Uh, but with that, guys, I want to thank you for all your support. If you have any questions for me, reach out. I'll do my best to answer them. Take care. Thank you to my sponsors. For all your disc golf needs, check out Phoenix Discs and Foundation Disc Golf.